we were touched on it. The college football playoff is not part of the NCAA. No. The NCAA does not do the promotion, handle any of that for the CFP. So just continue it. Just cut off, be college football, have your own legislation, your own rules, because at some point in the future, the big wigs, the bigger teams are going to go in, I think it's inevitable, pay their student assets, Will. Their contract players, contract employees, whatever you want to call them. It's currently called student athletes, but I'm not a coach. I don't understand. I really don't understand why our colleagues nationally or why media any, anywhere who covers college sports, semi-pro sports, continues to refer to these young men and women as student athletes. They, 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 they acquiesce to the narrative of their media part, their business partners. But me, well, the three letters, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. See, three, the three, three letters and the four-letter folks, I can understand that. Yeah, they, you know, a buck's a buck. Yeah, these are student assets. Yeah, these last few days, yep, has proven this is business. This is big business. To that point, Chris, I, I, I communicated with somebody that's in touch with some Pac-12 softball players that are hot to sure. say it mildly about. I went to this Pac-12 school so my parents wouldn't have to travel to see me play. And now, I'll use the example I used earlier. I was speaking to somebody. Oregon's women's lacrosse team has to go play Rutgers on a Wednesday night. Flying from Portland, Eugene, Portland to Newark, New Jersey. And then say three of those young ladies have an 8.30 a.m biology midterm on Thursday. What happens? Are they gonna they're gonna take the red eye back to Portland to be in position? I mean, what kind of condition would they be in after a cross country overnight flight to take that eight thirty AM midterm? 